Greetings from Stanford University. I'm Bill Barnett, professor at the Stanford Doors School of Sustainability and the Stanford Graduate School of Business. I'm Ingrid Ackerman, an undergraduate studying environmental systems engineering. And we have with us here today, Professor Rosemary Knight, a professor of geophysics here at Stanford. Welcome, uh, Rosemary. Thanks. Great to be here. And uh, now Rosemary is uh, in the uh, is chairs the Department of Geophysics in the Stanford Door School of Sustainability. And and Rosemary, um, you just ran a uh, conference. Uh, we've heard great things about it, uh, entitled "Taking the Pulse of the Planet." And uh, and we'd love it if you could tell us some highlights from that conference. Well, taking the pulse of the planet is a phrase I use to describe very generally the tremendous explosion in sensor technology and data science we've seen over the last decade that is now allowing us to measure, map, monitor various components of the Earth system, giving us the data we need to address challenges in sustainability and climate change. The specific focus of the workshop was taking the pulse of the planet, sensors to solutions for California's San Joaquin Valley, for groundwater science and groundwater management in the San Joaquin Valley, which is the southern part of the Central Valley. Do you mind explaining why it's so important for us to monitor the San Joaquin Valley? So anyone who lives in California knows this is a challenging state when it comes to fresh water. Historically, we've had periods of droughts and periods of floods. And what is climate change telling us? We are going to have more extreme droughts and more extreme floods. So managing our groundwater supply, groundwater being the water that's below the ground surface, managing our groundwater supply so as to meet all the needs is just getting more and more challenging. When I say all the needs, who needs fresh water? The ecosystems to function. Surface water is dependent on groundwater because the two types of water are connected. Ecosystems depend upon our groundwater. Communities depend upon our groundwater. Large urban centers and also domestic well owners. And of course, we have agriculture because anyone living in California also knows the incredibly important role the San Joaquin Valley plays in providing our food. You know, we, we hear about this a lot. Uh, in the in the press, of course, we know about uh, all of us know at some level that obviously water is very important. Uh, your conference had a number of very specific papers along these lines. Maybe you could share with us some of the specific findings that uh, were revealed at the conference. So on the first day, we started out with people representing what I think of as the various sectors, the sectors that are very dependent upon a reliable source of groundwater, both the quantity of the water and the quality of the water. And starting the conference, we had Julie Rentner, who's the president of River Partners, talking about water needs for ecosystems. There is increasing interest in capturing flood water and using it to help restore habitat that's been lost over the years, restoring wetlands, restoring floodplains. How can we move water into these areas and generate habitat for wildlife? How can we provide nesting areas for migratory birds? How can we support the fish that are moving through the interconnected surface water? And so Julie started us off talking about are just alerting us to the information she needs to understand how various species utilize wetlands, floodplains. And we came to realize we need sensors to just understand the baseline, what kind of habitat is preferable. After Julie talking about ecosystem needs and also someone else talking about ecosystem needs, we moved into a section, a session where we had people talking about the needs of agriculture. And what the needs for sensors are in order to understand how to better manage this intersection between the crops we grow and the water we have. Should we be thinking about fallowing of fields? Is that really a net benefit? Or are we going to suddenly create air quality concerns by solving our 
water quantity concerns. And then we talked about the need of communities. And we had someone there representing domestic well owners. She herself was a domestic well owner and showed up with a very fancy form of sensor. It was a fishing pole with a lead weight at the end. And she goes around to her neighbors and lowers this fishing line in their wells to help them try and figure out how deep their wells are. Because many people on domestic wells just don't have access to the data they need to understand When's my well going to go dry? Is it going to be surprise? Suddenly I have a dry well and I need to come up with $20,000 to drill another one. And then over the next couple of days, with the mix of people we had there, both from water agencies, from nonprofits, National Lab, Academia, Stanford, and UC Davis, UC Merced, Fresno State, we talked about the whole need for sensors, for open and accessible data. Oh, someone from Berkeley, can't skip Berkeley. And she introduced this term, actionable data. You know, ensuring that the data we acquire allows us to take action. So did you, in the conference, get to any of these solutions? What are some of these new sensors that have been developed? Or perhaps we've taken sensors from other disciplines in science and now applied them to this need to take the pulse of the planet? There are many forms of satellite measurements that people are just starting to explore how we can utilize satellite data. So instead of the time-consuming effort of making individual measurements in individual wells or in individual fields, can we tap into data that are now publicly available? So we had someone who's working with what's called OpenET, which is came out of NASA, and it uses satellite data to measure evapotranspiration. So many agencies are very interested in this ability to quantify the water loss through evapotranspiration. Evaporation is water lost from a standing body of water. Transpiration is the water that plants return to the atmosphere. And so we had a couple of talks looking at this really amazing technology that we can use satellite data now to quantify ET. A lot of what we talked about was the need to continue to again and again bring these two communities together. The people with the needs, the people that understand where we need actionable data and the people who are interested in developing new sensors, deploying new sensors, building the kinds of sensor platforms and data sharing platforms that we need to support efforts to better manage groundwater in the San Joaquin Valley. You know, one of the things that strikes me about this conference, Rosemary, is the way you did bring together folks from the field in context with uh, scholars who who are doing the science, uh, but maybe just by the nature of what they do, they don't have the the experience on the ground. And and that coming together, did that yield insights that surprised you? And if so, what were those? It was incredibly rewarding. And I have to say, the way I've done my science for about 15 years now is I always seek out real people in real places with real problems. So everyone at that conference I knew from previous work I'd done in the San Joaquin Valley. Well, not everyone, but most of them. And I had a lovely email this morning from someone with a a nonprofit, one of the domestic well owners in the Valley. And she was just a buzz. She said, that conference just gave me the boost I needed. It was so amazing to be in a room full of smart people who are committing themselves to help us solve these problems. And in fact, she and someone else from the San Joaquin Valley stood up on day two and said, we've just decided we are hosting the next workshop a year from now. You're all coming to the Valley to visit us. (laughs) That's great. That's fantastic. So my... Was there an insight? What came together? Just how appreciative people are and the people who were there that were more on the solution side, like the academics, they loved hearing more about the problems and connecting more with the real people with the real problems. Very interesting. Something coming to mind is a theme running through this conference, and that's an increasing amount of data. Was there any discussion at the conference of data management or how to optimize collecting data so as to not overuse energy? Yes. Well, we had one talk from, again, someone working with a nonprofit, and the group she works with collaborates very closely with the Department of Water Resources to think about 
how to archive and distribute data and to think about such things as common data standards so that when you're trying to integrate different forms of data, it's not so challenging that you just don't even try. So that's the sharing of data mm -hmm. aspect of it. What was the second part of your question? Ooh, sort of like quantity of data, how to oh, manage Oh, the quantity of data. Oh, yes, we had a really interesting talk from a graduate student, I think in electrical engineering, and it was on using photonics for computation and talking about something we've all seen in the news recently that, okay, it's one thing to suddenly have all these data and have all these computational workflows, but all this computational crunching we're doing is consuming a tremendous amount of energy. So she talked about things such as frequency combing and how to set up your computations so as to be more ener energy efficient. You know, uh, Rosemary, the uh, folks in the in, among our listeners are going to be the kind of folks who listen to the news. And if you just listen to the news and you say that you're having a conference on California and especially issues around water, uh, in the news, it always sounds pretty dire. Colorado River, uh, concerns about what might happen to the Sierra snowpack, uh, uh, issues of the water table. Uh, for our folks who, who they're not scientists, but they've listened to the news, do you have a message for them? Yeah, be hopeful. <laughs> Truly be hopeful. And the sensors to solutions was to communicate that there are solutions. I'll give you one very specific example that I'm working on with my research group. The idea that we have periods of drought and we have periods of flood has led people to talk about managed aquifer recharge, flood managed aquifer recharge or flood mar, where managed aquifer recharge means we don't just rely on natural processes to recharge, refill, replenish our groundwater system through precipitation, trickling down below the ground surface, rivers coming in and trickling down below the ground surface, that we actually take water and we direct it to specific locations where we can flood fields or we can put it into a pond and that water then moves below the surface and recharges, refills our groundwater. So what we now have the technology to do, and it's a geophysical imaging method, is to assess various locations on the ground surface and figure out where are the optimal low plate, where are the optimal places to spread that water and have it efficiently move below the ground surface. So the message, be hopeful. We have sensors, and we are looking for solutions. That's incredible. That yeah, uh, that leaves me uh, hopeful. Uh, uh, yes. Absolutely <laughs> hopeful. Thank you very much, Rosemary. And so with that, Rosemary, Professor Knight, thank you so much for coming, and thank you for running this fantastic conference. And I want to thank you and the team at the GSB that supported us in putting this on. Fantastic team to work with. If I start listing names, I'll forget someone, so I won't. And, and a huge thanks to all those who participated and contributed so much over the day and a half of the workshop. Absolutely. And thanks to you too, Ingrid, especially uh, coming and doing all this in week 10, given that you're a student. Of course, that's when the pressure's on. Uh, and to all of you listeners... Until next time, the Stanford Initiative on Business and Environmental Sustainability podcast series is sponsored by the Stanford Graduate School of Business and the Stanford Door School of Sustainability. Music by Charged Particles. That's Caleb Hutzler, Mike Rock, and John Krosnick. <laughs>